Thanks for joining us on another month of tips, tricks, and techniques, and more with Mamaki's Applications Team. I'm Hugo Gonzalez, the Applications Team Supervisor. As you know, you can place single items on the UJF table and print one at a time. But when you want to transition into more of a production environment, a jig is a great option for having multiple pieces laid out at once to make the printing process a lot faster. In this episode, I'll be reviewing everything from the design layout of the jig to the materials that you use to create it. Let's check it out. To review some of the design considerations, I'll be using this jig as an example because it shows many of the features. This was designed to the size of the 6042 table. Generally, if there is any height difference between the jig surface and the material being printed, you don't want to use reflective materials. This one, however, is perfectly flush with the surface. So the glossy surface is the same as printing on a flat sheet of acrylic. But given the choice, I'll always go for a matte surface. This one is going to be fastened with thumb screws. So I'm going to layer the acrylic high enough to get over the top of the thumb screw's head, which is just under seven millimeters. I'm sure you've noticed there's a little bit of wobble when I lift the jig. That's because each layer has a seam near the middle. At the time of construction, I didn't have sheets that were wide enough to cover the size of the table. So each layer is comprised of two smaller sheets. There are three layers total. They are joined by a puzzle style edge for identification and base integrity. The shape of the middle layer faces the opposite direction from the base layer. And the top is split in a straight line because it already has a complex shape. So when I lift it, there's still a little bit of play, but it stays together and it lies perfectly flat on the print table. Let's take a look at creating the design. To create a jig, the first thing I'm gonna do is open one of the designs for the phone stands that I'm creating. This will help me with the spacing when creating the jig layout. With the file selected, I'll now select the jig print option. Then check jig print to name the new layout. Under the jig definition tab, I'll start to define the jig parameters. Starting at the top, I'll leave the jig as a table size. And the print area will remain at the origin, 00. The material size refers to the part that we're printing. Each piece is 3 by 6 inches. The interval or pitch refers to the distance between the parts from the same corner to the same corner on the next piece. So in order to keep one inch spacing, I'll enter four by seven. As you see, the size changes have pushed the prints off of our print area. So I'll reduce the rows and columns under counts. I'm only gonna have two rows with six parts per row. Since we don't have more space for parts, I'm going to offset them off the origin a bit. The origin is here at the bottom right corner. We will still have jig space beyond the print area, but this will make it a little easier to align. And I forgot to center align the image placement, so I'll do that now before returning to image layout. I'll also mark it read only to indicate to myself that this is done. If I need to, I can edit this later. Now that we're done with the basic part layout, I'm going to select print the jig layout button. The pop-up menu will give you printing and saving options. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you may have seen me print the jig on a sheet of paper on the table. Virtual jigs are great for prototyping and one-ups. But to create a jig, we're going to save it. First, I'll change the line width to two points. I'll leave the offset at zero. And I'll change the line color to 100%. And then I'm going to save this file. I'll import it into Adobe Illustrator later. So now in Illustrator, I've opened the table layout for the 3042. The table layout file is available in AutoCAD formats and PDF. 
Selecting the layer, you can see that there's quite a bit of detail in the measurements provided. I'll be working with this file, the layout for the 6042. I've already stripped away most of the measurement layers, so I can work with the basic layout. Here in the corner, you'll see the registration point that I'll be using. This corresponds to the registration point on the table on each corner. You should note that the threaded registration points fit M5 screws. I am now going to overlay my general jig design. My jig has a registration hole just a little bit larger because the thumb screws that I use have a little lip on the bottom. If you're going to use a screw with a more narrow head, you can sink it below the surface with a larger hole. The jig is slightly smaller than the table, but the registration points will still be fixed relative to the origin. So this is a basic layout of all of the jig layers. I'll now import the rest of the layout that I just created in Rasterlink. I'm going to go to File Place to import the file, and then I'll align it to the origin. Okay, now that all of the elements are in place, I'm going to organize my layers so that each layer has all of the elements that it requires. For example, the base layer is going to be the only one that has the corner registration holes. And while the middle and the top layer are the same shape, they have that little cutout for the thumb screw, only the top layer has the print areas open. With all of the layers organized, I'm going to work only with the top layer. I'm also going to isolate all of the print areas so they're a little easier to work with. For these, I'm going to create a finger hole next to the print areas so that it's easier to lift each piece after printing. I'll start with a two centimeter half circle and I'll place copies of it next to each print area on the top right. And once I'm done with that, I'll highlight everything and use the Pathfinder menu to join all of the shapes. And here you have the final layout for the top layer. As I mentioned before, I'm going to construct this with sheets that are smaller than the full bed size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create copies and then I'm gonna use the unique shapes to cut them. Here's a little speed up of that process. These are now ready to be cut. Once all of the layers are cut, they can be layered with glue or acrylic weld, and then it's ready to be used. The design principles are the same for the 3042 table. As you can see, this one was constructed in almost the exact same way with the finger holes and the layering to accommodate the thumb screw height. This one is used to print acrylic photographs edge to edge. If you consistently overprint onto the jig, the ink will build up and you will have to clean it periodically after a few tables. So by dialing it in, you'll minimize the amount of times you have to clean it. Okay, I'll finish this off by reviewing a couple more styles of jigs. This one here is made of dye bond, and it has studs that sink into the registration points for easy removal and placement. This particular one was made for baseballs. You can rest the baseball on the bottom portion, but because you want to keep the jig surface flush with the print area, this has a cover that only exposes the print area of the baseball. By covering this way, it reduces the risk of damage to the head. Like the pen jig that I had at the start of the video, this jig was routed out and glued onto a base layer. This style can be made out of acrylic, styrene, and even MFD. You can even make a temporary or single-use jig that can be made out of corrugated cardboard. The important part is that they're dialed into the jig print functionality in Rashlink. Thanks for watching, and please be sure to ask any questions you may have. And thank you to our media partner. Please feel free to contact us about this application 
or anything you'd like to see with the subject line TTT comments and suggestions.